Thank you for joining us today for our lightning talk, empowering accessibility in the era of online learning. I'm Annie Tudora, a user experience researcher at Atlantic BT, and I have my master's degree in user experience design from Kent State University. And I am Kim Casey, an accessibility at Abler, a digital accessibility firm that uh, focuses on eliminating barriers for people with disability. And I have just over 20 years of experience developing accessible products and training resources. So here's a picture of me, and I'm super excited in this picture. And not only because I had just graduated with my bachelor's in film and media at Georgia State University, but also because I had just finished what was the most difficult semester of my entire college career. I spent most of my bachelor's degree limping around campus and something to know about downtown Atlanta where Georgia State, it takes place. The, the classroom buildings are very far apart. So it takes about a 15 to 20 minute walk to get from building to building. And after three years, I was diagnosed with osteonecrosis also known as bone death. And several of my bones in my knees and my ankle, my wrist and my hip have lost circulation and are very painful and are essentially dead. So once I found this out, I had a very hard time getting around and my knees were very painful. So I decided to spend the last semester in a wheelchair. And I quickly found out that the campus of Georgia State University was very difficult for someone in a wheelchair. The ramps were largely not up to code and it made it very difficult for me to get up and down places. And the sidewalks at down, in downtown Atlanta were very bumpy and lots of hills. So within two weeks of using the wheelchair at campus, I injured the cartilage in my chest and I was unable to push myself any longer. That meant that I had to rely on the kindness of my fellow classmates and my teachers to get me from class to class. And while I deeply appreciate the kindness that they showed me every day while I was at school, it also felt really frustrating and demoralizing to have to rely on everyone else to do things that I was normally able to do, even something as simple as going to the bathroom. And there were days that were so hard for me that I had to call my then fiance to come get me from school because I was crying. But after graduating, I decided that film and media was probably not the best career for me with my disability. So I went back to school and got my master's at Kent State University in ex user experience design, where I knew I would be able to create online experiences that would be accessible to everyone. My degree was entirely online, so I got to work from home, from, from my home office. I got better grades and the experience was virtually stress-free. Right after I graduated, I was able to get a job uh, a remote position at Atlantic BT as a user experience researcher. And that's where I am today. With these remote accommodations, I was I felt like I didn't even have a disability at all. And Annie's story is not the only one. I'd like to share with you a story of Abler's CEO. His name is John. He was diagnosed with retinous pigmentosa in college, which means that your eyesight just kind of fades as you get older. Uh, we also found that, or he also found that it uh, fades faster if you're really stressed out. So uh, once he was diagnosed, he tried to hide it and he didn't really want to let anybody know that, that he was struggling with that condition um, and resultingly ended up dropping out of college. So he struggled so much that, you know, and just realized that he wasn't going to be able to make it with the way he was trying to do it at that time. Uh, he didn't stop there, though, thankfully. Um, he kept traveling around, and he was offered a job in Cameroon to set up a cell communications network. And he actually had an interesting experience there where they found out he was visually impaired and almost didn't want him to go and um, try to talk him out of it and ended up giving him just six months to prove himself. And he did that and more in six months. And so that was a great experience for him and it gave him the motivation to return to college. And so he applied for a, another, uh, a new college 
And on the first day of orientation, he was found himself inside uh, a meeting hall where he was supposed to find his name tag on a table and find the correct seat. Unfortunately, he was not able to see the name tags, so he did the only thing he could think to do is reach out to the person standing next to him who happened to be the dean of that college and asked her to help him get to his chair and find his name tag. And she serendipitously had a has a child who has a disability as well and really encouraged him to embrace his uh, disability, find out what resources are available and uh, to get the help he needs to succeed. And so that experience was great for him because he was able to um, learn about what, what resources are available to people with visual impairments and um, really opened up doors for him. He met his wife. Um, he was just really able to participate in life like never before. Um, and all sorts of new opportunities surfaced. And he ended up as CEO of Abler, um, breaking down barriers for people with disabilities. So nobody else had to struggle like he did when he didn't know that there were resources available for him. And there, these stories are, are not unique. Um, globally, there are 1 million people with a disability and each person has their own story. Uh, some like John struggle because they don't know about available resources. Some are embarrassed to ask for help. And like in Annie's case, sometimes the available resources just aren't enough. She couldn't get from class to class. It was a real barrier. So whether it's um, a teacher only offering materials in paper format where they're not digitized and a person with a visual impairment can't read them, or if it's ramps that are just too steep uh, that a wheelchair can't access, these things really can stop people from getting the most out of their education. What online learning gives you is is kind of a forced condition where um, different resources and different learning types are are available. And so another one of my colleagues uh, started his college career and found that none of the online learning resources were accessible. So he, instead of dropping out or, or really fighting battles with the accessibility department, he just offered to help them get their resources accessible. And it really opened their mind and they created this partnership so that he could um, help them make the materials accessible and in turn, then he got a better education. So it's a partnership between the student and the school and that's how success really blossoms. So there's a lot of potential benefits of online learning for those with disabilities. For one, as in with my story, there's no need to navigate campus. For those with physical disabilities or visual impairments, this can be extremely beneficial if they can do things online. Recorded lectures can be helpful for certain people with learning disabilities. And of course, online learning can make recording lectures and reviewing them a lot easier. And Online, you're usually provided with a digital text to support learning, and this can be easier for screen readers as opposed to a paper text. This can also be enhanced by allowing magnification capabilities, adding alternative text and level of headings. And then there are auto-generated subtitles for Zoom, and you can record those Zoom videos and review them later. However, just because one thing can benefit some people with disabilities doesn't mean that it benefits everybody with disabilities. And we have also seen a lot of challenges in the online learning space. So for one, online learning actually decreases the visibility of disabilities. So some people might have a visible illness. If they have a wheelchair or something like that, you might can tell that they have a disability. But for me, if I don't use my wheelchair, then there's no way for you to know if I have a disability or not. And that's what we call an invisible illness. Um, in, a, in a research report in 2011 found that when students with disabilities study online, they were reluctant to disclose that they had a disability, even in the face of inaccessible online learning material. So online learning can actually make it harder for teachers uh, and educators to know who has a disability and what kind of accommodations they might need. So even though Zoom may supply with automated closed captioning, they can also be very subpar and confusing, which could lead to even more confusion than before. 
but this can be solved by providing closed captioning on recorded videos or transcripts for media with video or sound. And factors such as home distractions, social isolation, and self-motivation can be difficult for many people with learning disabilities, and even if you don't have one. Inaccessible third-party software can be a problem when a professor prefers a teaching uh, supplement outside of the materials provided by the school, which may have been vetted for accessibility. And so that brings us to how accessible online learning can benefit any, everyone and, and why really we should be looking into this. Online learning has come a long way in terms of accessibility over the past couple of years, obviously because of the pandemic. Uh, it's sort of been a forced accessibility 101, but accessibility is a journey. So uh, I think at the beginning you kind of feel overwhelmed um, it's a lot of work, but then once you start thinking it and incorporating into your everyday and all your uh, regular lessons, then it becomes something that you just maintain and nurture over the years. And with a commitment to accessibility, the benefits to everyone include uh, you're building your content on a good foundation so that you're thinking about accessibility at the start. You're trying to anticipate any needs that might arise from everyone in your audience. Um, and you're considering your audience regardless of their ability. You're more intentional with your content. So you really are starting to think and break down how am I best going to reach this student and um, how best can I present this information in a way that will help everybody learn. And uh, you're also making your online or your content uniform uh, so that everything is the same. Everybody gets the same experience, whether it be in all digital or if it's a visual format, everyone's getting the same content and just increasing awareness about accessibility and understanding different learning types and different needs of consumption, online learning consumption. I believe in the social model of disability, which states that a disability is the impact of an inaccessible, socially constructed environment on a person with an impairment rather than something inherent in the person with a disability, which means that the problem isn't that people have disabilities. The problem is that society and our social order hasn't created solutions and accessible experiences for everyone. The pandemic has presented us with a unique opportunity to increase accessibility and online learning. And with the correct considerations and implementations, we can give those with disabilities more opportunities than ever before. And with those implementations in place, people with disabilities will find themselves in a world where their disability doesn't impair them in their learning or chances for success. Here's our work cited. And we realize that accessibility is a big subject matter, so we welcome any chance to speak with you about any questions you might have. Uh, you can contact me at kim.casey at abler360.com. I also provided our Abler LinkedIn link and a QR code that will take you directly to our website if you want to find out more about digital accessibility and just creating accessible content. Uh, there's also contact information for Annie. Um, her email is Annie Tudora, and that's spelled T-U-D-O-R-A at AtlanticBT.com. The Atlantic BT website is there as well, along with the LinkedIn. And we thank you for joining us today. It's been our pleasure to talk about accessibility and online learning, and we welcome the chance to talk with you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.